I'm Dr. Simon Hull from the University of Cape Town's Division of Geomatics. In this video, I'll be telling you about land information as a component of the land administration system. Land information is a very important component of the land administration system because it is the core of effective land administration. Information leads to knowledge by both governors and the public, and knowledge is power. Hence, land information needs to be managed effectively for the common good. As noted by Antonio Zavenbergen and Augustinus in an article about new land tools for land governance, and I quote, Land information is important for the promotion of good land governance that contributes to poverty reduction and sustainable development objectives. Information empowers people and thus strengthens democracy. The systematic creation, storage, and sharing of land information is crucial to the success of any land administration system. The good governance goals of transparency, accountability, and accessibility are supported by having up-to-date and easily accessible land information. Land information takes a variety of forms and comes from multiple different sources. Let us begin with the concept of the cadaster. It's an odd sounding word that you've heard us use before. We have described it as the foundation of land administration as portrayed in the land administration system figures. You may be unfamiliar with this word, and that would not be surprising. It's mostly land surveyors and conveyances who are interested in the cadaster. But actually, anyone with an interest in land should know what the cadaster is, because it is the foundation of land administration. The cadaster forms a component of a land information system and provides the spatial information required for effective land administration. In other words, an effective cadaster provides information about who holds what land, where, when, and how. In the past, the cadaster applied only to formally registered land rights and ignored informal and customary land rights that are not divided into surveyed parcels that have identified owners, as evidenced in the International Federation of Surveyors definition of the cadaster from 1995, where they said it is a parcel based and up to date land information system containing a record of interests in land. It usually includes a geometric description of land parcels linked to other records describing the nature of the interests, the ownership or control of those interests, and often the value of the parcel and its improvements. Hence, many people think that cadaster is meaningful only in reference to surveyed land parcels and registered owners. However, in this series and in recent research, our understanding of cadaster has broadened to include records of interest in delineated areas of, of land, even if not registered. Thankfully, the earlier tunnel vision approach is giving way to broader understandings of land, land rights, and cadasters. A cadaster is a record of land ownership and rights in land in the land information system to determine who holds what land where, when, and how. Cadasters may be multi-purpose, combining juridical, fiscal, and regulatory components. Juridical refers to a register of rights, restrictions, and responsibilities associated with land parcels. The word juridical means law-like as opposed to judicial, which refers to the courts. The juridical aspect could thus be seen as the legal administrative side of land administration, including holding, transferring, or subdividing land parcels. Fiscal refers to a register of land value and taxation. The word fiscal refers to matters relating to public revenues, taxation, public spending, debt, and finance, as opposed to monetary, which relates to money and how it is supplied to and circulates in an economy. Regulatory refers to the use and development of land. The word regulation in this context means policies, principles, norms, standards, and mechanisms, that is institutions, 
to moderate and guide land use and processes of development. The following table sets out these components in more detail. On the juridical, administrative, technical side, we've got allocation of rights to land. This could be sovereign grants, or sales, or donations, uh, land can be acquired through inheritance or prescription or expropriation. Uh, it might be servitudes, leases, uh, registered mortgages, and off register allocations by various local or community authorities. A uh, parcel delimitation describes the definition of the parcel. Uh, that means the demarcation of the boundaries on the ground and its delimitation on a plan. Adjudication is about resolving doubts and disputes regarding rights and boundaries. And registration is the official recording of information uh, about rights uh, of land, regarding land parcels. On the regulatory side, we've got land use controls. That refers to zoning, uh, environmental regulations, and other such uh, regulations that would restrict use rights. The fiscal side, we've got property assessments. That would be the valuation of the parcel of land and its improvements, uh, as well as property taxation. So that's the rates and taxes that you pay in an urban area. Uh, compensation uh, that is payable when land is expropriated by the state. Information management refers to the land information system side of the cadaster, which would be the collection, storage, retrieval, dissemination, and use of land information. And finally, we've got enforcement mechanisms, which would relate to the defense of a person's rights against invaders, uh, trespassers on land, and the enforcement of land use. Fisher and Whittle describe three elements upon which a cadaster is founded, referring to the main functions a cadaster performs. They also discuss three imperatives or necessary conditions a, cond a cadaster must meet to be effective. As we discuss the elements and imperatives, consider whether they apply equally in formally uh, registered, uh, informally registered, or, or customarily uh, held land tenures. Element number one is dispute resolution. In determining who holds what land where, when, and how, there are going to be disputes over the answers to those questions. The cadaster works within judicial or customary dispute resolution processes to resolve those disputes. Element number two is on land demarcation and boundaries. One way of thinking about a cadaster is as a map of land parcel boundaries. Identifying what land is possessed and where it is located is a fundamental function of the cadaster. Traditionally, this is the function of a professional land surveyor, like myself. But this role is also carried out by chiefs or traditional leaders and community members in customary areas and committees in urban or peri-urban informal settlements. You all remember that in video 7, we mentioned that land administration is not just the government's responsibility and where government is weak, it is undertaken by community members or civil society sometimes in combination with government. Element number three is professional administration. Legally, a professional land surveyor like myself is the primary participant in the operation and administration of a cadaster. Land surveyors are the only people who can legally create land parcels and define, identify, or change the boundaries thereof. They are supported by the offices of the surveyors general, the offices of the registrars of deeds, conveyancing and notarying professionals, and pro professional planners. So those are the three elements of a cadaster. The three imperatives, the first one is place. The purpose of a cadaster is to ensure certainty of place. It can either be done by technological means such as surveying, which means higher levels of accuracy to allow for a formal legal recognition by means of registration. Or it can mean an attachment and identity. In many cultures, land as a place has connotations of intergenerational ties to a particular place through genealogical links with ongoing implications for personal identity and property. A tradition in Corsa and Zulu cultures is to bury a baby's umbilical cord within the boundaries of the homestead. This signifies the eternal connection between people and place, 
and expresses the strong cultural relationship among the members of some ethnic groupings and the land. Imperative number two is stability. A cadaster provides information on who has what rights to which land, where and when. This information offers certainty that contributes to security of tenure. If the cadaster cannot guarantee such certainty, individuals and communities may be dispossessed of their land rights due to a lack of evidence to support their claims. Imperative number three is economy. Land is the ultimate source of all wealth. The purpose of a cadaster is to protect this wealth. As already emphasized, there are varying forms of land value. Land has economic value as a financial asset for some, but it also has spiritual and cultural value. People attribute value to land based on their cultural norms and traditions, and these are as important to the individual and communities concerned as economic value. Ideally, a cadaster should serve to protect all forms of land value. But this ultimately depends on what criteria and decision-making powers there are to mediate competing interests. So to sum up, having defined cadaster, we expanded our understanding of the traditional notion of cadaster from being concerned only with formally registered and surveyed land parcels to incorporating a broader understanding of land, land rights, and land tenure. We looked at the three defining elements of the cadaster, being dispute resolution, land demarcation, and professional administration. We also presented the three imperatives that the cadaster must fulfill, place, stability, and economy. We asked the question whether these elements and imperatives can be understood to apply equally to the traditional formal cadaster as to situations of customary and informal land tenures. We will answer this question in the next video.